The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Alyssa Welch and I am a project manager for the Ohio University Voinovich School of Leadership and Public Affairs. Today's webinar, entitled Rain to River, Raising Awareness About Stormwater Pollution, is made possible through a grant from the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency's Ohio Environmental Education Fund. My colleague Sarah Cornwell and Ohio University student Lincoln Whitlow will be presenting information about using storm drain stenciling activities to protect local waterways in Ohio. Sarah is an environmental specialist at the Voinovich School where she writes watershed plans and conducts chemical and biological water quality monitoring. Her background is in environmental planning and management, and she gained experience in acid mine drainage treatment and monitoring while serving as the Raccoon Creek Water Quality Specialist. Sarah continues to maintain acid mine drainage treatment projects, collect water quality data, and analyze data in the Raccoon Creek watershed as part of her Voinovich School portfolio. She also trains student researchers and assists them with designing study plans, field data collection, and data interpretation. Her research interests include acid mine drainage project performance optimization, stormwater management, and exploring strategies for managing other non-point sources of water pollution throughout the coal bearing region of Ohio. Sarah is the project lead for this Ohio EPA grant. Lincoln is a senior at Ohio University and this spring he will obtain a bachelor's degree in political science and a certificate in environmental studies. He began volunteering with local watershed groups in the spring of 2016, and then in the summer began working for the Ohio University Voinovich School on this Rain to River program. I have just a couple of points that I would like to make before I hand the presentation over to Sarah. First, if you have a question that you would like to submit during the session, please use the question field on the GoToWebinar navigation pane in the right-hand side of your screen to type in a question for Sarah and Lincoln. We will try to get to as many of the questions as possible during our time together today. Additionally, as part of this grant, there will be a second webinar in the early summer for additional outreach. We welcome your feedback so we can best answer your questions about this community environmental activity. So with that, I'll step out of the way and turn this webinar over to Sarah. Sarah, take it away. Thank you, Alyssa, for the introduction. And thank you everyone for choosing to spend your lunch hour with us. Two Ohio University students, Lincoln, a senior in political science who's here with us today, and Alexander Horvath, a senior in marine, freshwater, and environmental biology, work side by side with Voinovich School staff to develop the Rain River program. Grant partners on this Ohio Environmental Protection Agency's Environmental Education Fund grant include the Federation of Soil and Water Conservation Districts, Gerald Hilferty and Associates, Athens County Libraries, and Rural Action. Just one second here, we seem to be experiencing a little bit of trouble getting the presentation started. One moment, please. Well, I'll go ahead and inform you that today's webinar schedule is going to include a brief discussion of watershed issues in the Appalachian region of the Ohio River Basin, and then we'll introduce the Rain to River program, stenciling kit contents, how to stencil, event planning, volunteer safety, best practices, and we'll save time for questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, as for the focus of our area, some of you may not be in the Appalachian region of the Ohio River Basin. However, you'll find that even though that is our focus area, there will be plenty of content in this webinar today uh, that will be helpful in your region as well. So we should be seeing our schedule slide here, and we'll go ahead and keep on moving. So the Appalachian Clean, Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative uh, is a partnership between Ohio University's Voinovich School and Rural Action with support of longtime partners, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Mineral Resources Management, the Ohio EPA, and the Appalachian Ohio Watershed Council, formerly known as the Southeast Ohio Watershed Council. These groups formed the Appalachian Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative, which is a collaborative to improve water quality and restore watersheds in the Appalachian region through education, training, partnership building, connecting resources, and project implementation. The Appalachian Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative grew out of an initial planning process led by Rural Action 
to determine how watershed and water quality stakeholders could improve more watersheds across the region and well into the future. Watershed management in the Appalachian region was done in small HUC-12 watersheds with a focus on one or two primary impairments. In most cases, the focus was on acid mine drainage from historic abandoned coal mining. Ohio University's Weinert School of Leadership in Public Affairs and Rural Action have long partnered on successful acid mine drainage restoration projects. However, success has been limited to those certain watersheds and AMD impairments. The watershed initiative rose out of the need to work on a more regional scale while addressing other rural impairments as well. This large service area includes rural Appalachian cities and counties and the coal bearing region. This map displays the service area for the Range River Program and Storm Drain Stenciling Kit distribution. As I mentioned before, through this particular program and outreach effort are tailored to the Appalachian region. The Rain to River program I'm going to share with you today can be replicated anywhere in Ohio, thanks to the Ohio Environmental Education Fund. In our targeted outreach area over the last year, we were able to increase outreach and support for soil and water conservation districts, land trusts, and conservancies. We assisted with grant writing, um, provided administrative support for the Watershed Council and partnered to do repairing tree plantings, invasive species removal, native wetland plantings, rain barrel workshops, stenciling, and more. Through this original 319 grant that helped form the Appalachian Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative, we found that many small towns expressed an interest in doing storm drain stenciling. Therefore, we wrote an EPA, Ohio Environmental Education Fund grant focusing on stormwater education in rural communities. This may be a review for some of you. Stormwater is a type of non-point source pollution and that it comes from many diffuse sources, can be caused by rainfall or snow melt, and the runoff carries away pollutants into our waterways. This type of pollution can result in a decrease in water quality, harm to aquatic life, and damage to local aquatic ecosystems. And items that frequently end up in local waterways as a result of stormwater may, pollution may include trash and lawn waste, grease soaps, pesticides, fertilizer, motor oil and antifreeze, paint, plastics, and various other chemicals. An Ohio Environmental Education Fund grant was awarded to Ohio University's Warren Rich School to raise community awareness about protecting local waterways. The grant includes the following major activities, storm drain stenciling, educational hang tags, one of which is shown at the right and we'll cover in more detail in another slide, an interactive portable stormwater display, water quality demonstrations, informational webinars, and one to two stenciling events with Rural Action Stream Restore Corps AmeriCorps members. Now we'll go into more detail about each grant activity. Using paint and stencils, volunteers will mark educational messages on storm drains and catch basins that flow into nearby creeks and streams. Painted messages include the phrase, no dumping, drains to river, accompanied by the image of a fish. This message alerts people that discharges into storm drains pollute valuable water resources, and it can also heighten community awareness of nearby waters. The Range River Program has the goal of stenciling 1,500 storm drains throughout the service area during the 2017 grant funding period. The photos you see on this slide are from a storm drain stenciling event in downtown Gallipolis. Through the original EPA 319 grant, we designed this educational hang tag to be hung on doors of homes and businesses in the area being stenciled. The hang tags let people know that volunteers are painting, no dumping drains to river on the storm drains to raise awareness about stormwater pollution. And include the message that storm drains are connected to local waterways, emptying directly into nearby streams and rivers. The hang tags provide an opportunity to describe the project and have face-to-face -face communication with residents and local businesses. There's also space on the front of the hang tag to place a mailing label size sticker. The sticker will share information about proper disposal of common pollutants by including local so solid waste management district contact information. Our goal is to reach 10,000 households in the region. We are developing an interactive display which will show the path stormwater takes from house to river bypassing treatment to illustrate the importance of proper use and disposal of potential pollutants from residential activities. The graphic on the right is from Montgomery County, Maryland, Department of Environmental Protection. We are creating a display that is reflective of stormwater pollution and scenery of a hypothetical small Ohio town 
that also helps teach residents how they can prevent stormwater pollution. The display is being professionally designed and constructed by Gerald Hilferty and Associates. Gerald Hilferty and Associates specializes in creating amazing interpretive exhibits for museums, discovery centers, art galleries, and community groups. The display will be available to borrow in the Appalachian Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative Service Area by soil and water conservation districts, local schools, and to be used for community fairs and festivals. We have a goal of reaching at least 500 people at approximately 20 events. Community education will also take place where we are located in Athens County, Ohio, by holding community events in conjunction with the local library system. Events will include water quality demonstrations and environmental education activities. Our goal is to educate at least 20 people at three events. <clears throat> and today, we are holding the first of two webinars sharing information about the Ranger River Program. Communities in the region have already had some of their storm drains stenciled while receiving positive feedback from the community. Over the past year, we researched community storm drain stenciling programs, put together our first kits, and helped organize events in a handful of small towns in Gallia Meigs, Tuscaroras, and Perry counties. You see these pictures here are of Real Action Stream Restore Corps AmeriCorps members and Ohio University students and community volunteers. <clears throat> These projects were undertaken by various groups in the region. This is an excerpt from Gallia Soil and Water Conservation District's summer newsletter. A partnership between Gallia Soil and Water Conservation District and the Raccoon Creek Partnership stencil drains in downtown Gallup Lease around the city park along the Ohio River. The article states that the city commissioners were very happy to help with this endeavor and said even if this prevents just one person from dumping pollution or trash into the drains, that would be worth it. The rest of the article's text comes from the educational hang tags and summarizes the grant and provides contact information for Ohio EPA and Rain to River. So now we are going to get into the section of the presentation where I touch on how to plan an event. And then we'll go through the supplies available to communities to hold their own events and also the stenciling process. So what makes an outing successful? Communication. Communication is key. Volunteers and community members have a vested interest in protecting local waterways, and they're able to talk to one another about water pollution. Well-trained and informed volunteers can communicate with people on the street and local businesses while stenciling. And communication between event organizers and the local government officials is essential. Obtaining permission to stencil drains is just one part of that communication process. The placement of stencils and uniformity of placement is important, as well as choosing the most appropriate area to stencil. <clears throat> and let's touch on obtaining permission. This is the first step in the process. We find that our small town officials are busy people. So the easier you and your volunteer can make, for it, the, make it for them, the easier time you will have event planning. It goes a long way if you can approach them and provide a short statement describing the project description of the group or groups doing the stenciling, a list or a map of streets or neighborhoods that will be stencils or, or that you would like to stencil, a proposed day and time of the event uh, with an accompanying rain date, and include a photo of the stencil with image dimensions and a description of how the stenciling process works. Expect local officials to ask questions about the painting process, which you will be very familiar with by the end of this webinar. What will you need? Really, who will you need? You'll need a group of volunteers. Storm drain stenciling events can be well suited to groups looking for an annual event or a one-time service event. Training is quick and many drains can be stenciled in a short window of time. This is a list of some groups to consider involving. Um, older high school students or youth accompanied by a parent or guardian, college students, civic organizations, neighborhood associations, church groups, or other local service groups. And finally, you'll need a storm drain stenciling kit. Each kit will come with the following documents. A stenciling guide, which will include information helpful to event planning, as well as how to, how to actually stencil. The educational hang tags that we discussed earlier, a borrower's agreement, which will be for use of the kit, a photo inventory of the kit contents, Rather than charging a deposit for the kits, at this time we're asking that any materials that are lost or damaged, they are replaced. And that photo inventory will help with that. Sample liability waivers that you can use for your own event. 
and a post-event report to be filled out after the event and then return to Ohio University Voinovich School. This will help us in meeting our goals. Um, if you provide the event date and location, number of drains stenciled, number of volunteers and some volunteer demographics, and then photos with captions. Now on to the kits. So each will contain a minimum of two stencils. You can see the photo here of the stencil, as well as a minimum of two cans of inverted spray paint. This is a permanent non-water soluble paint. Um, once you fill out the borrower's agreement and determine uh, how many stencils you'd want to do in your community, then we can determine how much spray paint would be needed for the project. Uh, there's also a hand broom and a wire brush, which will help prepare your area for stenciling. The kit also includes a plastic drop cloth, packing tape, scissors, and a permanent marker, traffic cones, orange safety vests, door hangers, which are not pictured here, rubber gloves, and mineral spirits. Now we're going to show how each of the kit contents is used in the process. To prepare the stencil, you're going to tape a plastic drop cloth outline to the stencil. This will serve to prevent access paint from getting onto other surfaces while you're stenciling. You'll trace around the stencil, remove the center rectangle, then you're going to tape the stencil onto the drop cloth, as you can see in the photos below. <clears throat> now, the placement of the stencil in relation to the storm drain will vary, depending on the desire of the community and the orientation of the storm drain. So first, you'll identify and prepare the area around your chosen storm drain. Make sure the surface is dry and begin with a wire brush to loosen dirt, as you can see in the photo below. Use the hand broom to brush away the loose dirt. Then place the stencil with the attached drop cloth adjacent to the drain in the basin of the curb, which you can see on the picture to the right. Going back to communication with local government officials, you want to make sure you're orienting your stencils all in the same direction for uniformity. Now we are ready to stencil. One or two volunteers will hold the stencil in place while another applies a thorough yet even coat of paint onto the stencil. After painting, carefully lift the stencil, taking care not to smudge the image. Place the traffic cone next to the wet paint. You can see gloves in the photo above, which is recommended because volunteers will get paint on their hands. And on a warm sunny day, the stencils will dry in minutes and the traffic cone can be removed. After completing a project, the stencils need to be cleaned to keep them in usable condition and be ready for another group to borrow them. To easily clean, you remove the plastic drop cloth and start by wiping the stencil off with a rag soaked in mineral spirits. Depending on the amount of paint, and how long the paint has been left on the stencil, sometimes hot water is enough to remove the paint. Or if the paint is not coming off easily, the stencils can be soaked in the mineral spirits. Now that we've gone step by step through the stenciling and cleaning process, Lincoln is going to provide information about volunteer safety and education, as well as share best practices and helpful pointers from his experience stenciling drains. Thank you, Sarah. When working with volunteers, it is important to keep them safe and educated. While planning for the event, please inform the volunteers of the following. Let the volunteers know if there are any applicable liability forms. This will be dependent on the group that is stenciling. Make sure that volunteers are comfortable standing and stenciling on a city street. The roads can get busy and we want to make sure that everyone is comfortable. Additionally, make sure that everyone is wearing appropriate clothing for the weather. Closed-toed shoes are preferred, and volunteers should be cognizant that they might get paint on their clothes, so they should wear something that they wouldn't mind getting dirty. Make sure to, br to bring plenty of water. If those organizing the event are not providing water, please make sure that the volunteers bring their own. The same measures should be made for food. If not providing snacks or lunches, please tell the volunteers to provide for themselves. Finally, make sure that everyone is aware of the rain date as well as the rescheduling process, should there ever need to be one. Before you start a stenciling project, make sure you go over the, the stenciling process with all the volunteers and make sure that they understand all the steps. Do not paint on busy roads with no pedestrian access 
this is obviously a safety precaution. If there's no pedestrian access, then there is no one to see the labeled message. Consider the time of day, and if it is a weekday or a weekend, um, this can affect how, many, how much traffic fills the streets. Um, paint in groups of three or more. Again, this is another safety measure, as well as one of practicality. Ideally, you'd like to have one person painting, one holding the stencil, and one watching the street. Wear safety vests or bright clothing. This helps keep the volunteers visible throughout the duration of the project. And remember, we do not want to direct traffic, but rather observe it and communicate appropriately. Now we'll talk about some best practices that we've learned in our experience stenciling storm drains in the area. Um, for locations being stenciled, um, stencil storm drains in areas that are visible to the public. It does no good to stencil in an area where no one will see it. Also, when possible, paint on the downhill side of the drain. This prevents the stenciled message from deteriorating as well as getting covered by debris. Remember to keep uniformity. This is often something that city, city officials express as a concern. They generally want it to look neat and tidy. Also remember the weather. It must be at least 50 degrees in order for the paint to dry. And like Sarah alluded to earlier, only seconds in the middle of the summer. Pavement must also be dry for the paint to be applied correctly. So this will limit your painting after events of rain or a storm or whatnot. Also limit painting in high humidity. Be aware of the wind. Since we are using spray paint, excess paint might blow onto other surfaces nearby, like cars or other areas of the pavement that you don't want to get stenciled. As for the paint itself, two light coats of paint work better than one heavy coat of paint. This applies a better image and prevents the stencil from getting clogged up too quickly. A single can of spray paint can last for 20 to 25 stencils, uh, depending upon the thickness of the paint application. Remember this so you can have the right number of cans on hand while stenciling. Finally, stencil lifespan depends on care and use. Paint will build up on the stencil as you label more and more storm drains and can eventually blur the message. So retire the stencil for the day if the paint builds up and distorts the text. With these practices in mind, generally each stencil will last for 12 to 15 applications. Well, thank you, Lincoln. <clears throat> and all the information presented today about the stenciling process is included in the stenciling guide that's going to come with each kit. Um, we've kind of gone quickly through the presentation information. Um, so my contact info is here on this slide as well as in the webinar announcements. Um, so you can contact me for additional information. Uh, if you want to host your own storm drain stenciling event, uh, once we get it completed, if you want to use our interactive stormwater model, we're pretty excited about it, uh, how this model is going to turn out and how useful it will be in our rural communities. Um, or if you'd like to learn more about the Appalachian, Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative, feel free to contact me. For more information, here are a few of our sources which assisted us in program development. Special thanks to Lincoln and Alex for all their work on this project. And with that, we'll open things up for questions. Thank you, Sarah and Lincoln. We have time for, for some questions. Again, if you have a question, please type it into the question field in the GoToWebinar navigation pane on your screen. Um, as we wait for those questions to come in, uh, note that this webinar presentation and its audio recording will be posted on our website at www.ohio.edu slash CE3. Within a few days for your reference, we will also email the website link to all the webinar registrants as well. And while we're waiting to see if there are any other questions, um, I know there was a section at the beginning of the slide show I went quickly through. I skipped, skipped over one of my slides that's about the Appalachian Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative Service area. Um, that area <clears throat> is one um, where it's been a partnership between Rural Action and Ohio University. Uh, in this area, watershed management was typically done in small watersheds, uh, mostly focusing on acid mine drainage, one or two water quality impairments. Um, so we've, we've worked and had some success on these acid mine drainage issues. 
Um, however, it's been limited to certain watersheds and the acid mine drainage impairments. So the Appalachian Ohio Clean Watershed Initiative rose out of this um, goal to work on a more regional scale while addressing other rural impairments. So the original funding for that grant um, came from Ohio EPA and the US EPA Section 319 grant. <clears throat> and then this Rain to River program grew out of actually a very smaller program where we were just doing a couple small town communities. And then just grew so much that uh, we went ahead and wrote this OEF grant uh, to start the Rain to River program so we could get more supplies and make those available to communities by putting together kits, stenciling guides, and everything you need to, to plan your own events. We did have a question come in. Uh, the question is, how long does the paint last on the pavement, and when should it be redone? That is a good question, and it is, of course, subjective to wear and tear. The paint that we, we've tried out a different, a couple different methods of painting, as well as different types. Uh, we've, we've tried at first to use just um, regular marking paint with rollers, street paint. Um, it found the application to be difficult. Um, so that's how we moved to the spray paint. Um, and then we switched from, from regular spray paint to the inverted marking paint. So this is paint that's designed to be used on asphalt as well as for marking roads. Of course, it isn't going to be as durable you know, as the lines on your roads, but it is expected to last a few years, just depending on where the stencils are located. As Lincoln mentioned, one of the suggestions is to make sure and stencil um, below the, the drain because since they are in an area on the side, could be in an area on the side of the road in the gutter where, where they could um, get a lot of debris or have access to street cleaners. Um, and then the other variables, if you had them up on the sidewalks, they could potentially last longer. So, so it is a pretty big variable. Um, as far as we know, the communities that we've worked with um, this past year, um, starting last summer, um, have all held up really well since then. Thank you. Sarah, I'd be interested to know more about the interactive stormwater model. Is that something that you can talk a little bit more about in terms of the application of that or other um, plans that might be um, other uses for that? Sure, yeah, that's great. I can go into that more. Um, so the idea with the interactive stormwater model is it would be, it could even serve as an outreach um, kind of connected to the stenciling that's happening in a community. So for example, if a community was ha holding their own storm drain stenciling event, then they could potentially have this interactive display in the library um, during that time to help reinforce the message. Um, the display, we intend it to be, we talk about interactive and fun, we want it to be something that, that kids can use that's going to have some moving parts um, to where they may be able to turn on and off some best management practices um, in some way that they can also visualize how water moves through the system, how it can move from their homes into the streets and then going into our waterways and see, you know, how pollute the travel, the path that water travels as well as pollutants. And the idea is, is that we could add information about best management practices, small things like rain barrels or rain gardens um, or different street features that can help treat this rainwater that, that may be carrying pollutants before it gets to our our waterways. Um, so the interactive display um, you know, could, could be in a local library, um, community events, it could just be a, you know, just go to the county fair for a day. Um, and then accompanying that display is we'll be able to um, provide kind of a side display with either a map or other information that's really community specific. So that people can find out if there's an event being advertised in their area or if they um, have a group that would be interested in holding their own. So communities don't necessarily have to participate in the storm drain stenciling to be able to borrow the display. Thank you. Um, let's see. There's another question that has come in about uh, if communities or groups are able to have a copy of this presentation to present information to their village council. Um, it sounds like um, there has been some outreach done, but um, if a copy of this presentation could be forwarded for that type of use, would that be um, uh, acceptable? And, and as I mentioned, we will be forwarding this presentation around. It will be available for download on the website, and that link will be emailed to all registrants. 
Um, so is there anything you'd like to add about presenting that uh, information to other groups? Yeah, sure. Sure, two things. One of those um, is that this presentation did come out of making early community presentations. So we, we went to city, um, city meetings as well as village council meetings. And uh, actually Lincoln presented uh, some of our initial presentations on the storm drain stenciling process. So that's how, how this presentation came about. And since this is funded um, through the Ohio Environmental Education Fund, uh, part of the mission is to create educational materials that can be shared. So we'll be sharing, sharing this knowledge. So everything that we create through this grant, um, copies of will go to Ohio EPA. And then as Alyssa mentioned too, a copy of this webinar uh, will be made available on our website. And we'd be very happy to um, you know, provide it for use to help promote the Rain to River program in your own community. I think that um, about wraps up the questions that we've had come in at this point. Um, if there's any additional comments that Sarah, you would like to add? Um, I think we went through it all, all pretty, pretty efficiently. There was a lot of information here. So please feel free to contact me if you have any questions at all, um, or uh, we'll be provide any feedback as we will be doing a second webinar um, later on this year. And we're, we're looking for communities that are interested uh, in, in holding the Storm Drain Stenciling events, and we're pretty ready to go. We have a couple of events scheduled in April here locally, um, but our calendar is pretty open. So if you you think you um, want to do it, feel free to contact me and we can get you started. Well, thank you everyone. Um, thank you Sarah and Lincoln for presenting today and thank you all the registrants um, for joining us today for today's webinar. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you on this opportunity. Have a great rest of the day. <laughs>